It's been a really fun day. We've all been a part of rolling it out this morning. Really we'll I'm, in, I'm inspired by your courage. If I had my mom here, it would be the worst thing. I would suddenly revert <laughs> to like 10 years old. It's a little awkward. It is a little awkward. It's a little awkward, but, but I'm glad you're here to share the awkward. I'm trying to help you. my position for I got my daughter on one side. I got the most exciting man in politics I on the other. He is. You know, and he actually, he's a, a great tweeter, which I hope that... Uh, I'm you learn how to do. I, I've been inspired by. I would say, sitting by him. Yeah, shave his head too. Aren't you? <laughs> that too. does help. Yes, it does. So let's talk about no labels because it rolled out today. We've seen groups like it come about in the past, but they haven't seemed to last. They haven't been as successful. So what is different about no labels? Why do you both feel you want to be a part of this group? What is different about no labels is the fact that it isn't an issue-specific movement. What gives any movement permanence? In order to have permanence, you've got to have a grassroots network of believers, people who show up to meetings, who are organizers, who are willing to participate in the give and take of politics. So we had 1,500, uh, and they were dazzled by Corey in his comments today, 1,500 activists from around the country who came to New York on their own dime to talk about making Washington work. That's a big deal. And that's, that's why, because he tweeted it out. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that constitutes a big difference. Second of all, we've got a block of problem solvers in Congress. We've got 25 who we rolled out today, Republicans and Democrats in equal number. And by the end of the year, our goal is to have probably 75 or 80 Republicans and Democrats who call themselves part of this problem-solving coalition. You can imagine how the debate is going to change when there's less finger-pointing, acrimony, and partisan point scoring. But people, regardless of ideology, because everybody's going to bring a different worldview to the table, but commit to A, putting their country before party. B, governing for the next generation as opposed to the next election cycle. C, giving the people you represent the full truth. And D, a pledge to work together. I mean, those are hardly revolutionary concepts, but they're nowhere to be seen in our dysfunctional Washington. Why do you feel the need to reach across the aisle and be part of No Labels? Well, I guess I have a lot of reason to be a part of it. And first of all, I want to say that one thing that uh, the governor uh, missed was I think another reason why it's it's a strong organization right now is they have, we have two incredible co-chairs, a senator and a governor, who both have great legitimacy, both have great respect nationally, who've uh, stood across, together across aisles and said, we're going to be a part of this, we're going to legitimize this group, and we're going to show uh, through our example what America could be and should be. And that's why I'm very grateful to, to sit here uh, uh, with, with John Hudson right now. And as far as me, I'm a mayor, and, and Fiorello Gordia said it very simply, there's no Democrat or Republican way to fix a pothole. Every day I have, to, I have to deal with urgencies, and I don't have the luxury of ideological debates. What did I have to do in Newark? Well, I had to cut government. We cut 25% of our, of our staff, uh, of our city government staff, um, uh, in the last few years. The same thing with revenue. I had to find creative ways to bring more revenue. Every day we have to fix the problem. And what it's forced me to do is to look for or partners anywhere I can. So when it comes to criminal justice reform, you know, we actually found uh, uh, the, the Manhattan Institute on the right side of the political aisle who came in and helped us design some of New Jersey's most successful prisoner reentry programs, empowering people to come home, sitting with grassroots activists who can't even say the word Republican, not to mention be one. And so for me, when I see what's, what's challenging me in Newark, from healthcare to immigration uh, to economic growth. I look at Washington and I get very frustrated because I see a political system that's designed in many ways not for pragmatism, not for problem solving, but pulls everybody to the wings and where politicians are rewarded not for solving problems or working together, but they're rewarded by sticking to stiff, rigid, impractical ideological lines. And we've got to change that mix because most of Americans are right there in the middle trying to figure out ways to make their lives better, to nurture the genius of the kids in school, to have the security of health care, of housing, to have economic opportunity or chance to be entrepreneurs. And so if we can focus on those issues, I think we'd make a lot more progress.